How's it going everyone? Equinox Phoenix here and today we're going to talk about Legacy Season 4 Episode 18 titled By the end of this, you'll know who you were meant to be. Oh, Pain. Pain and suffering. Anyway, let's let's start with Landon. Uh, as we know, we've got like multiple storylines all converging on one. So let's... Um, Well, let's start with Landon. Landon is drinking himself into a stupor, or at least seemingly trying. Uh, <sighs> the necromancer, you know, Ted. Ted is um. The necromancer is taunting him. He's like, ha 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 ha. Uh, and when Landon says his boss can't talk, and so he's just drinking himself with stupid because his boss can't talk and uh, say what he wants from him, uh, the ferryman comes in and um, speaks and says, "Let's have yes, let's have a drink." Um, and so they go back to the boat, and a transformation occurs in the ferryman. Where they uh, reveal their true form. That of a woman named Lynn. Or a goddess named Lynn, technically. Um, hey, we got another one of uh, Ken's siblings. <laughs> anyway, she reveals the, uh, the reason all of this exists peace uh, well peace is the realm of the gods so valhalla is uh the name she gives it and there's um the reason she's been cursed to ferry people back and forth uh or to ride the ferry back and forth as it were is because her brother cursed her when she decided to let a few humans into peace um because ken's an asshole as uh as we very well know, um, the reason she wanted Landon, which she says, is so that Landon can replace her as the new ferryman woman thing. <laughs> Sorry, that was Landon's thing. Anyway, uh, Landon agrees, and when he goes and tells Necroboy, El Necromancer, the Necromancer realizes. Uh, and telling him that, yeah, Landon said yes. Uh, the Necromancer realizes, shit, you're trying to send me to peace. Because making the sending the Necromancer to peace would be just that that chef's kiss first, uh, first act as the fair, right? Landon replies with, no, the Necromancer can't go to uh, can't go to peace, but there is someone who does deserve it. Puts his hand on the Necromancer's hand and whoosh, enter Ted. Anyway, so Ted is back. Um, and when Lida mentions, uh, we don't know how long the transformation will last. They're both like, let's head to the boat. <laughs> like, Ted's like, let's get to peace so that, you know, my other half, as it were, does not come back. Because once in peace, uh, the Necromancer is. Uh, that's where Len's, uh, storyline is. Now, Cleo and Caleb. Uh, Cleo goes into Ken's mind, where Ken throws a dagger at her. Right? When he, uh, sees her in his, in his dream. Uh, the dagger appears in the real world, um, because Cleo just went, You know, she just disappeared. She uh, exited stage left. Anyway. Um, now, of course, Ken t talks to uh, Aurora about this and says, get my daughter to make the weapon. And when Aurora's like, or else what? Um, 
<laughs> he responds with, "Ask my siblings if, if you can find their bodies," and it's just like, "Oh, oh, this man, this man just just straight up admitted to murdering his siblings. That's great." <laughs> and people thought Klaus was bad. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I think he did. Did he have Klaus in it? I don't know. Cole's the only one of his siblings who's actually killed. Were killed by the Salvatore gang. Um, Team Elena, as it were. Um, and by Marcel. None of them were actually ever killed by Klaus. Yeah, so even Klaus never killed the siblings. Why do we keep bringing up Klaus? Mm, who knows? Uh, maybe because he's my favorite character of the entire, like, universe? You know, of the entire series? But who knows? Maybe it's something else. Anyway. So Aurora goes to Jen, finds her in uh, one of the steel coffins, and wakes her up and whatnot. And Jen, real, you know... Decides to drop the, you know, Ken can mess with his, uh, can distort his memories and make you see what you want, right? And it's just like, oh. Anyway, uh, Ken is visited by Chloe once more. Oh, uh, well, he's awake. Traps Chloe. Then brings in Caleb. And threatens to kill Caleb if Cleo doesn't, um, give him hope. Caleb says, don't do it. And Cleo finally says what she loves most about Caleb. His eyes. They give each other a tearful goodbye after that. You know, they're both crying and dead. Now, MG and Ethan. MG tells Ethan, you can't use your powers, you will die. And... As a result, um, Ethan goes home to stop using his powers, hopefully. Um, and Lizzie f finally confesses to uh, MG. And just as they're about to kiss, Cleo shows up and tells them that Caleb is dead. Now, for the main, main meat and potatoes of the episode. Alaric and the Super Squad have a meeting. Alaric and the Super Squad bias Ethan, I should say. Where we come up with a plan to use phosphorus and sulfur uh, combination to hurt Ken. Uh, because that was used in the olden times, apparently. White fire and brimstone is how Ben described it. Um... And so, um, uh, after this, Hope decides to try and train Alaric back up a little bit. Um, it doesn't work. And Alaric, he tells Hope, you need to, you need to figure out, like, who's gonna die, right? You know, who's gonna set off the explosions, because that was, like, no one is escaping explosions. They mentioned in the meeting, no one can uh, say... Uh, escape the explosions even at vamp speed. Um, Hope never checked it. Now, Alaric tells her you need to, like, like, this isn't, we need a full plan. Um, now, Hope does go and check it, and it turns out the person that has to do the death uh, not the death, has to do the explosion thingy, is Lizzie. So she tells Lizzie about it. And <laughs> afterwards, she has a conversation uh, with Alaric, where Alaric's trying to tell her that you need to accept death and all of this. And she tells him that he's actually the one who needs to accept death coming. Um, because the person that has to, does the explosion has to be Lizzie. <laughs> Because she's a heretic, and she can siphon off Ken enough to weaken him so that Ken dies. Um, this is where the pain is. This, uh, as well as Caleb's death, is where pain is suffering. Now, 
it seems like Alaric's not uh, uh, on with the plan. But Alaric decides we're going to hold a, a going away party. And that going away, and during that going away party, Hope gives a speech, uh, where she says, "You know, I don't like speeches. I can't. I'm not comfortable doing speeches, or you know, having all eyes on me, um, and whatnot." Uh, uh, that's more of her mother, and that's that's a Haley thing uh, than a Klaus thing. Klaus was very showboaty, <laughs> as we well know. The man like the man loved to put dramatic effect to literally everything. <laughs> oh boy, I miss Klaus. I will forever miss Klaus, and uh, considering it's the last season of the TVD uh, universe um, as a whole, these last two episodes uh, after this, like, I don't know what I get. And I'll, I'll need some... I'll need another show to watch. Uh, probably won't find any, um, but hey. Anyway, uh, during the party... Alaric has a father-daughter dance, uh, citing that um, he believes Lizzie will survive because that's who she is, and that she'll eventually have a, like, a big wedding and all that, but he's like, just in case, uh, let's have that father-daughter dance now, um, and they, so they do, and uh, yeah. That's that's the entire episode, but uh, the episode actually ends with Cleo being like, he's dead. And it's right as uh, Lizzie and MG are about to kiss. She's confessed to MG. Her heart has been laid bare. And their moment was interrupted by the death of her friend. Uh, and hence pain and suffering. Um... It's a very bad idea to kill off characters from the first season of a show. That is why they're usually written off. Uh, you know, they exit stage left, alive and well. But... Right, that's why Josie uh, just kind of got on a bus and traveled to who knows where. Um, it's why they introduced Limbo for Landon. Um, it's why, uh, Landon's brother, I forget his name, um, is in a, a perpetual, like, living state in a prison world, uh, with his parents. Uh, you're not supposed to kill off a season one character, um, unless it's, like, necessary for, like, the plot. Uh... I do not think Caleb dying is necessary for the plot at all. Uh, and as we've said before uh, on this channel uh, a lot, I don't like necessary death. Unnecessary deaths. Um, you know, it's just... It's it's not a good way. Knocking him into a coma? Sure. Um, you know, they did that with Lark, right? <laughs> It gave some character development to Lizzie, to Josie, um, to pretty much everyone, um, except Hope. <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, uh, Caleb is dead now. Uh, luckily, for the show, Legacies is ending in two episodes. Um, so there won't be as much backlash to the death of a season one character simply because. The show's over. I can't even bring myself to be upset at uh, Caleb's death. Like, or I am upset. I'm sad, uh, but I can't make myself angry, as it were. Uh, well, I am sad to see him go. Um, I can't be angry because there's no more episodes. It's just two more episodes. One of which is the last is the series finale. Um. Anyway, I should probably end the video here. So, tell me what you guys thought of the episode down in the comment section down below. Tell me what you feel about Caleb's death.
that's gonna be it for this video if you guys haven't already hit like hit subscribe if you're new i will see you guys next time and as always stay bright